on the issue of informal economy and digitalization. Uh, we have two recent policy briefs on this issue, and I would like to highlight that the discussion today that we share here are our views and not of the Secretariat or APEC member economies. Uh, may I share the materials, uh, if I may? Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. So uh, to start with, uh, informality has long been a problem and in some places uh, it remains stubbornly high. Within the APEC uh, region itself, uh, we estimate the size of informal economy to be at 13.4% of GDP uh, in 2020. This is a quite reasonable figure, but Actually, this masks the wide differences among economies, with developing economies tending to have higher share than the developed ones. Also, more importantly, such measure is uh, only one way to see the issue of informality, which could be approached through different angles. Uh, for instance, it may be important to distinguish between informal labor and that of informal firms and uh, form informal activity itself. Uh, to see why, uh, we could see how the lower size of informal output in some economies, as you see on the screen, uh, mask the fact that informal employment is one of the main sources of livelihood for a swath uh, of the population. Uh, this is a phenomenon that uh, especially relevant in Southeast Asia. So why is informality an issue? Some might argue that uh, to work is better than being unemployed, uh, which is of course is a sound take uh, if we look into solely from the perspective of providing livelihood. However, there is also an issue itself with the shadow economy. From the worker's perspective, as we saw during the pandemic, informal workers tend to be more vulnerable to external shocks because they less they earn less and then they their income is more fluctuating than formal workers. <clears throat> Sorry. This also explains the strong relationship between formal uh, employment and also poverty rates uh, around the world. Couple this with the fact that protection. Uh, by regulations and access to social services and safety net uh, are usually tied to formal employment. From the firm's perspective, uh, for informal firms usually have lower labor productivity, significantly lower uh, labor productivity. Uh, they face scale issues, uh, typically small in size, lacking innovation, and mostly uh, run on subsistence purposes. So it makes it difficult for them to obtain credit to expand their businesses. And also another thing is uh, that might be relevant to policymakers, pervasive informality also implies revenue loss for the government as it is when unreported and it represents an untapped uh, revenue sources. It is estimated that uh, about $1.85 trillion uh, is forgone in about 13 APEC economies because of the informal economy activities. So there is uh, the issue of informality. And then at the same time, uh, the APEC uh, becomes more digitalized. More people have access to internet now uh, mobile phones and other digital infrastructures than ever. Just a decade ago, about uh, 1.4 billion people have no access to internet, but now it is down to 700 million in the APEC region. Still a lot, but nonetheless, uh, it's an achievement. Uh, access is also enhanced with cheaper data plan. So let's say in Southeast Asia, it used to be about 12 dollars but now 10 years later it's about five us dollars so uh with improved accessibility 
digital accessibility, the way we live, we work, and trade uh, are also changing. Uh, in terms of trade, uh, a big chunk of uh, intra APEC trade now is in digital. Uh, about two thirds of this digital trade in the form of digitally ordered services and goods like cross border e commerce and SaaS, while the rest are digitally deliverable services like financial and insurance services. In the labor market, uh, we see new forms of employment are emerging. Many companies are now shifting to hybrid or even fully remote arrangements, which of course provide uh, some flexibility or even too much flexibility, uh, uh, like what I'm doing right now too. Uh, while formal works uh, can now be done uh, remotely, uh, digitalization makes it easier to engage uh, in informal work. Uh, we see people doing gig works, uh, firms in engaging in digital contracting, digital nomadism, and so on. Then we also have uh, ride-sharing drivers who are not employees and may not have a formal arrangement in place. So the effects of digitalization might go both ways. It could facilitate transition to formal economy or in other case, promoting informal economic activities. Now, uh, the question is then how to promote the transition to formal economy. Unfortunately, given the uh, different nuances uh, of informality, there is no uh, one size fit all solution. But it will be helpful if policymakers first understand the root causes in the economy's context. Uh, as we can see in the screen, uh, we have a useful taxonomy which groups informality into three groups. Uh, the first one is the survivor type. Uh, these are those who, whose remuneration is too low and too low to become formal regardless of the entry cost. So, uh, it's the issues is not about the cost or the bureaucracies or stuff, but they lack the human capital and technical issues to enter the formal economy. Then the second type is type three. I'll go to type three first. These are the contrast of the type one. So they have higher com, uh, higher uh, productivity, uh, and they want to comply. Actually, they want to enter to formal economy, but uh, they are kind of forced into the shadow because of the high entry costs. And by cost, I mean not only the registration costs, but also other tangible and non-tangible costs. And this happens because of the bureaucratic barriers, regulations, procedures, and stuff. For instance, uh, in Singapore, about two uh, to register a business, to start a business, uh, about, we need about two days and costs about 200 uh, US dollar. But in Peru, let's say, it takes a month and then it costs about 550-ish. So that's uh, the issue with the type three. And then uh, lastly, the type one, this is the trickiest type to address because all these factors, these three factors actually uh, incentivize or contributes to them becoming informal. Uh, these are those that are just productive enough, but they chose not to do so because it is more profitable for them to engage in informal activities, perhaps to avoid tax, social security contributions, or other things. Uh, this is the case like in Indonesia, where just over a half of SME surveys they said that actually it's not costly, but uh, they think that uh, it is more profitable for them to stay informal, so they stay informal. So uh, regarding the digitalization itself, this brings us to how this digitalization could help promote the transition. You may see that... Uh, Digital solutions are particularly particularly helpful in three areas. Uh, I will depart from this abstraction and skip to some good examples from the from some APEC economies. 
in China, they have a digital system where they establish uh, a kind of system to improve workplace protection for rural migrant workers who used to back then work informally through oral agreement with their foreman. So what they did, they require the contractors to directly contract the uh, uh, labor, the labor, the workers, and then they mandated them to do real name registration of the workers through some online systems with uh, uh, assigning them to special bank accounts, wage payments and stuff. So wage payments are done online and then this system leverages the use of mobile internet and then big data and stuff to maintain or to, to, to maintain the surveillance, to maintain the whether they follow the regulations. The system seems to be effective. Like for instance, in Zhejiang province, uh, we see that the case of wage barriers have fallen by 8.4%. In Peru, they also have similar systems asking uh, businesses to register workers. So they saw a uh, increase about 1 million registration of workers between uh, 2008 and 2013. Another good example is in Mexico, they have table projects, uh, which offers a free internet connection, uh, sales and billing electronically, point of sale terminal, which apparently uh, allows the registration of 26,000 workers in the first year and also benefited about 89% of the beneficiary SMEs. So we see that digital, is, digital solutions actually may facilitate uh, formalization, but as many other things, there are also challenges. One is about the digital divide, which I have mentioned earlier about the infrastructure and the affordability. And then another thing is on the issue of cybersecurity and uh, privacy. Uh, they have uh, informal workers and firms have less exposure and then particularly vulnerable to cyber crimes and may not now may not know how to respond if they are affected by it. And then the issue of data portability, absence of this portability may prevent uh, the users, in this case informal firms, uh, to leverage and benefit from their data across platforms. Let's say in case of uh, credit worthiness, uh, if uh, digital transaction invoicing and registration are not particularly portable between across platforms, it could uh, limit their ability to seek credits from other uh, providers or other banks, let's say. It is also important to note that there is no direct uh, positive causal relationship between digitalization and formalization but it facilitates the transition to uh, formal economy itself. So to end the discussion, I would like to reiterate again that digital solutions may facilitate the transition away from informality. However, policies need to be targeted based on the prevailing circumstances. In this case, we saw that type one, type two, type three, so which characteristics are more prevalent in the economy. And then there are several areas that policymakers may uh, focus on, but I would like to draw your attention to three particular areas which are relevant in APEC-wide context. First, I mentioned about the digital divides. Uh, it is still a problem in some economies and thus we may look into policies like improving access, lowering costs and promoting digital uh, literacy. And then the second one is related to the issue of digital literacy uh, and the rise of cyber crimes. It is critical for policymakers to raise awareness and enact proper regulations to improve trust in digital okay. solutions. And lastly, on the issue of uh, regional cooperation, which is pretty relevant to APEC, there are some APEC roadmaps related to digitalization, which could be potential for such uh, cooperation. We have APEC Internet and Digital Economy Roadmap, also APEC Roadmap on Digital Financial Inclusion. This might be a starting point to tailor policies 
to address informality, but also at the same time, increase digitalization or making use of the digitalization. Of course, there's more to the issue and unfortunately we have limited time to discuss. So if you would like to read more about our views, uh, we have two policy briefs, uh, which you may access by scanning the two QR codes on the left. And finally, I would like to thank Again, the Philippines Apex Study Center and Ateneo de Manila for this opportunity. I yield back to Dr. Celero and thank you for your attention.